everyone. Welcome to the, today's discussion. My name is immigration attorney Ebony Anoforo, and I am located in New Jersey. However, I represent clients in all 50 states and around the world when it comes to immigration law matters. And today, on today's discussion, this today's topic is why does immigration believe your marriage is fake? Yes, they don't believe you. They think you're committing immigration fraud. They think your marriage is a sham. Now let's talk about that. Let's talk about why they think that your marriage is not real. First, I want to talk about marriage fraud being a really big issue, right? It is a crime. You do not want to do that. So if you're in a sham marriage, stop right now. Don't move forward. It is illegal. You should not be involved in that. Um, it's a very, 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 very serious crime and you should not be committing it, right? It's very serious concern for the U.S. government, for USCIS, and they have a very stringent process to determine whether a marriage is genuine or whether couples are entering the relationship solely for the purpose of receiving some sort of immigration benefit. And today, in today's discussion, I want to outline some of the top reasons. Now, there are many different reasons that might raise a red flag to USCIS when they're reviewing your marriage petition, but these are some of the common ones that do come up. So the first one I want to talk about is the timing of when you um, got married, the speed of the relationship. Um, if you and your spouse met um, and shortly after meeting, you rushed to get married, especially in cases where someone was either recently issued a notice to appear in immigration court, which means that they are trying to deport you, or if someone is in deportation um, proceedings and they went ahead and got married, met someone, got married, this um, can be a red flag to USCIS. And they will tend to question the legitimacy of the marriage if it seems that it was rushed into and it was rushed into also conveniently for the couple or for one of the, the person that will be receiving the benefit. So the timing of the marriage can be a red flag in marriage-based free card cases. Next, let's talk about a lack of a shared life. USCIS looks for evidence that you and your spouse share a life together. And this includes sharing your finances, having a joint bank account with one another, um, a, a joint lease agreement or mortgage statement if you have a house. Insurance, pol insurance policies, pictures um, showing that you guys shared significant moments in life together. Um, if you can't provide documentation showing that you um, have a shared life together, this will raise a red flag. And I want to talk about joint bank accounts because this comes up a lot when I am talking to clients. When we are submitting evidence of a joint account to USCIS, you want to submit an account that's actually being used, an operating account. So this is the account where you pay your bills. This is the account where you go grocery shopping. You may or may not have your check deposited into this account. If they see this account, they see that this is an active account. It's not just an account where you and your spouse opened up last week, deposited $200 in, and you just want to show that you have an account in your name. No, they want to see that this is an account that the couple is actually using together. That's going to prove that you have a shared life. Um, another red flag that comes up a lot is if you're not living together, if you're living at two different addresses, that is going to be a red flag. Most people, most couples, when they get married, they move in together or they at least have plans to move into together. Um, if you are not living together, that doesn't mean that you cannot get a green card. You just have to be able to provide a good explanation to USCIS as to why you're not living together. Um, in some cases, people are not able to live together if one spouse is in university in another state um, and is not able to move because they need to complete their studies. Fine. You have to explain that. There are some situations where one spouse has a job that requires them to travel or work out of state often. You have to be able to prove and show evidence of that. Ultimately, living together is very important and not living together can be a red flag. So you want to be prepared as a couple to explain this ahead of time to USCIS. Um, 
Another red flag that happens for a lot of couples is inconsistent answers during the marriage-based green card interview. This is going to raise suspicions. And USCIS will often separate couples if they find that there is potential marriage fraud um, going on. And this is called a Stokes interview. They'll separate you and they'll ask you questions. They want to test the marriage to see if you guys are in a bona fide relationship. Now, over the past couple of years, a lot of couples have qualified for a marriage green card waiver and they don't have to go through the marriage um, interview process. And that will happen when USCIS believes after reviewing your petition that you are in a bona fide marriage. So they'll waive the interview and they'll issue you couple, the beneficiary, a green card. Now, if they do not give you a waiver and you have to attend a marriage green card interview, it is extremely important for you to prepare for your interview. I know couples who feel like they know each other. They've been together for a long time. They don't need to prepare. No, it is very important that you prepare because even couples who have been to married for many, many years might forget certain details. It happens. People are forgetful. Um, so you want to prepare and go over potential questions that could be asked of you during the interview. You want to prepare uh, by reviewing your packet if you've had previous relationships, previous marriages. That could also come up during the marriage interview. So you want to be prepared to answer those questions. Another factor that could come up is a large age difference between a couple or if there's a significant cultural difference between spouses. Now, while these differences alone don't prove fraud, they can lead to USCIS scrutinizing your relationship more closely. So you want to be prepared to provide additional evidence to show that despite that you have these differences, that your marriage is genuine. Another red flag that comes up is if you received a green card from a previous marriage, you were the beneficiary, you got your green card, and shortly after you got divorced, and now you're filing for someone else to get a green card. This is a major red flag. Um, if you find that you're in this situation, I advise you to immediately uh, speak with an attorney because what could happen is USCIS can now look into your previous marriage and they might decide and determine that maybe that marriage itself was a fraudulent marriage and you could jeopardize your own green card. So if this is you, you wanna stop what you're doing and work with an attorney as soon as possible. And finally, I want to talk about family um, involvement. If you are unable to show that your lives are commingled, um, that you um, share close family and friends, this could raise the red flags. Um, I bring this up because sometimes we'll, couples will provide pictures of each other and they'll only have pictures of each other taking selfies. And there's no picture showing that they have spent time with family and friends. And that could raise a red flag as to the legitimacy of the marriage. Also, if there are questions about your family that come up during an interview, you're unable to answer like, what is the name of your mother-in-law? What is your father-in-law's name? Have you met your mother-in-law? These types of questions. If you're unable to answer those questions, that can also raise a red flag to the immigration officer that is reviewing your case. Now, proving authenticity of your marriage to USCIS can be challenging, but you want to understand certain red flags that can help you better prepare for your case. So if you have heard any of the things I discussed today that stands out to you and you feel like you might have a red flag in your case, feel free to give us a call. We'll be happy to help you. The best thing to do is you want to prove that you and your spouse have a strong, real, genuine, bona fide relationship. And how do you do that? You provide evidence of a strong love marriage, and we can help you do that. If you enjoyed today's discussion and you liked um, the topic that I talked about and you want to see more topics like this, go ahead and send me a message. You can leave me a comment. You can send me a DM. You can give us a call. If you have a personal immigration matter that you'd like to discuss with me, you can also give me a call. You can text or you can send us a WhatsApp message and we'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.